at Saki Bone Garage and Beyond Speed. We are putting a uh, one of our supercharger kits into an ND2 today. You can see we've already prepped a lot of the car, removed the bumper, removed the air box, removed the wheels, and done a lot of the under stuff. We're starting here with removing the intake manifold. Uh, there is one bolt on the bottom that you have to get through the wheel well, but uh, that, that's already removed right now. Now we're gonna get the bolts around here and get the whole thing out of the way. One th a couple things to be aware of, you need to unhook your brake boost hose before you do this, um, otherwise that will catch you up. There is a PCV hose on the back side. You don't need to be worried about that when you're pulling it off, it'll come up right off on its own. You don't need to touch it. Nice long extension helps for this one in the back. Got all the bolts loose now you'll notice at this point that there are a lot of these clips just clipped into it um, in various places there's not a lot you can do about these a couple of them like this one just about the alternator you can get kind of close to but you pretty much have to just break them off there's uh, I've never been successful in uh, getting them off getting them off nicely There's the one on the front and a couple underneath. Okay. We've got the intake manifold out. We want to take a look at the valves and see if there's too much carbon buildup. These ones don't look terrible, but they could use a cleaning. Some are worse than others. This is something you'll want to consult with your uh, mechanic, whoever's installing this, and figure out which direction you want to go. But uh, we usually suggest that if you have time, it's best to walnut blast these while you've got it apart. Once you've inspected your valve and you're, uh, you have enough information there, you want to tape off the ports so that nothing falls down into the engine. If anything falls down in there, it's a huge job to get it out and you do not want to do that. One change you're going to need to make in between the ND1 and the ND2 has to do with your throttle body. This is the adapter that Edelbrock provides just to extend the throttle body harness for the ND1. The ND2 uses a different throttle body connector, so this is just trash. What you're going to have to do is remove this 180 degree adapter on the connector. Once you do that, you should have enough room to uh, be able to plug in your throttle body when all is said and done. You do that by unclipping all of these little guys around the edge. There's one here, one here, one here, and one on the inside here, or two on the inside here and here. Once you get those guys off, this, this harness will be long enough to, uh, to plug right in. You can do it using a small flathead screwdriver or like I like to do, a couple of T-pins. Now you can see, got a couple extra inches out of the harness. Wrapping it up with some electrical tape is a good idea. I like to use the remainder of what's here, which is uh, wrapped around that little 180 degree adapter when you first start taking it off. Here's the supercharger unit itself. Uh, it comes for our ND2 kit. We have already swapped on for, this is our lower boost tune. Um, this is the, uh, the larger pulley that allows that. Um, it's larger than the stock ND1 pulley, gives you a little bit less boost, which for stock injection on, stock fuel injection on the ND2 is necessary. Uh, a couple things worthy of note. One, this nipple right here, 
very fragile. Be very, very careful of that guy when you're inserting the supercharger. It's extremely easy to break that. And if you do, you're gonna have to get a whole new actuator from Edelbrock. Not a fun day when you break one of those. Uh, other than that, you just wanna be aware of where your hoses are and you wanna make sure you hook up your crankcase breather. Forgetting that, also not fun. Also, the uh, don't forget your uh, gasket. It goes right in between there. Just give it a, it's made out of metal. You can give it a little bend so that it stays on there nicely and you don't have to worry about it falling off. We've got our crankcase breather hooked up. One thing to be aware of when you're actually inserting it, as well as being careful of the nipple on the bottom, this hose can scratch up your supercharger. They uh, used to send them with the plastic covering on here. I like to leave that on if it has it. Recently they haven't been. That's just an Edelbrock thing. Um, it's not a bad idea to cover it up if you can, but it's not necessary if you're careful. It's wise to have some of your top bolts handy for this stage. When you're putting the intercooler in, or charge cooler, the water to uh, air charge cooler, this guy, I like to leave a little loose, just gives you a little more leeway as you get everything together. Just pushing this guy as high up as possible to get as much clearance for this hose as you can. And then we'll be putting the bumper on. Before we put the battery in, one thing I like to do is to take, before you put this clip into your battery tray, I like to tuck this guy on the other side. Gives you a little bit more clearance to the belt, gives you a little bit more of a safety net before any potential problems. Last thing you're going to need to do is modify your under tray. If you look up under here, these hoses right here sit right where the under tray used to be. So you've got to cut it to just back a little behind this second bolt. You can do it with a number of different tools, a bandsaw, a sharp knife, doesn't really matter. A lot will work. Check your fitment. This looks pretty good. You just want to make sure you're not chafing your hoses right here. And this should fit just fine.
we've uh, covered some of the uh, more detailed points here just to help you guys out. And uh, yeah, makes the car really fun, really pumps it up. Have a good day.